The Hon. Amy Adams. Mr Speaker, I move that the Broadcasting Election Programmes and Election Advertising Amendment Bill and the Election Amendment Bill be now read a second time. Uh, Mr Speaker, both of these bills were introduced to the House in my name, but since that time uh, they have now transferred to the delegation of uh, the Hon. Mark Mitchell and I make this speech on his behalf. Sir, New Zealand has a robust and effective electoral system. Both these bills respond to the recommendations of the Justice and Electoral Committee inquiry into the 2014 general election and will help modernise and simplify the election rules. With the election fast approaching this year, it's in everyone's best interest to ensure that the rules are clear for everyone well before the public head out to vote. That's why these bills have been cognated to be progressed as quickly as possible as they are closely interrelated. With this in mind, I would like to thank parties who took part in the Select Committee for taking a very constructive approach and reporting back at the end of last year. Having these amendments to electoral law enacted in a timely manner is important so that the rules are clear for all parties, voters and other participants. Can I also recognise those members of the public who took the time to make submissions? Mr Speaker, both bills deal with related matters of electoral law. As highlighted during their respective first readings, they implement some important changes to enhance the efficient delivery of elections. The Broadcasting Amendment Bill modernises election broadcasting and funding rules in the Broadcasting Act, following a unanimous recommendation of the Select Committee. The bill removes parties opening and closing election addresses in favour of an increased allocation for each party. While the actual allocation amount is not in the bill, it will allow parties to spend their Broadcasting Act funding allocation to advertise with more flexibility across platforms such as the internet, reflecting, of course, the different ways that voters now seek to get their information. The election, uh, Electoral Amendment Bill reflects the changing needs and expectations of voters and will help modernise electoral law and practices. For example, the bill will enable the Electoral Commission to provide information to voters electronically and will allow the counting of advance votes to begin earlier on election day to reflect the increased popularity of advanced voting. The interrelation of the two bills is clear in the committee's recommendation that a new expense return for allocations under the Broadcasting Act be added to the Electoral Act, a change I will talk more about, uh, more about shortly. Mr Speaker, I'd like to touch briefly on other changes to these bills as recommended by the Justice and Electoral Committee, beginning with the Broadcasting Election Programmes and Election Advertising Amendment Bill. The first of these changes is a minor amendment to clarify the relationship between the Electoral Act expense limits and parties' funding allocations under the Broadcasting Act. The Committee has also recommended an amendment to ensure that the Electoral Commission uh, remains required to report to police when it believes an offence has been committed under Part 6 of the Act. One further minor amendment to the Broadcasting Amendment Bill recommended by the Committee ensures that the offence of arranging for a prohibited election programme applies only when doing so for a political party, as is currently the case. Thanks, Mark. Mr Speaker, I'd now like to turn to the Committee's recommendations for the Electoral Amendment Bill. As I've already mentioned, the first of these directly relates to the Broadcasting Act and highlights again why it's appropriate to consider these bills together. The funding allocation under the Broadcasting Act will no longer be limited to use on TV and radio. In order to provide continued transparency and assurance that the allocation is still being used appropriately, the Committee recommended adding to the Electoral Amendment Bill a requirement for parties to file a public, audited return of how they've spent their allocation. Adding this to the Electoral Act <coughs> excuse me, means that the new requirement can follow the same process in that Act which is already uh, used for parties' other types of expenses uh, and is well understood by them. This requirement will replace the existing safety in the Broadcasting Act of broadcasters themselves providing returns of all election programmes broadcast, which would have been impractical to extend to all providers of online content and advertising. The committee has also recommended a minor amendment to the provision which prohibits electioneering within 10 metres of the entrance uh, of an advanced polling place to clarify how some of the restrictions apply to electoral officials. A further recommendation of the committee is to remove the provision which makes it an offence for a former MP to sit or vote in the House thank you, after they have vacated their seat by way of appointment as a public service or returning officer. The committee has recommended removing this offence due to its limited relevance 
and the fact that the situation it covers is highly unlikely to occur in practice. The Committee considers that should the situation occur, it would be a matter more appropriately dealt with by the House of Representatives itself under the Parliamentary Privileges Act. The Committee has also recommended a number of other minor and technical amendments to these bills, which largely clarify the current provisions and correct inconsistencies in the current legislation. Mr Speaker, can I first of all thank the Committee for their careful consideration of these bills and acknowledge the outgoing Chair of that Committee, the Honourable Jackie Dean. Regular reviews of electoral law is an integral part of ma maintaining New Zealand's robust and efficient system of electoral law, uh, and these changes reflect that same due diligence by the Committee. The changes we're making in these bills will help simplify and clarify the election rules, leading to a smoother election pro process and better reflect the changing needs and expectations of voters and uh, political parties and candidates. Mr Speaker, I commend the bills to the House. Members, the question is that the motion be agreed to.